Hey everyone, welcome to another video. So in this one, um, I'm just gonna quick go over uh, how to inspect your ECU. So you basically take the cover off. There's four screws. Um, this basically will apply to pretty much all Mitsubishi cars, trucks, vehicles um, from, uh, <laughs> when did they start using these? Like 87 to like, um, I don't know, <laughs> 99 probably. Um, so any, any Mitsubishi cars, trucks, the Mighty Max, um, Colts, Summits, Mirages, DSMs, um, this is an actual DSM ECU. Um, as you can tell, I have DSM link in it. Um, but anyway, when you open up the, the cover and everything, there's going to be four screws, uh, Phillips screws, and uh, you don't want to lose them. So one of them was already gone pretty much um, when I purchased this ECU. Um, one of them was actually missing, and the case was a little bit dinged there, but all in all, everything works. Um, so the one thing you want to do when you get these uh, is essentially, uh, or if you want to inspect the one you already have on your vehicle, is look for leaking uh, capacitors. If these are leaking, they'll, they usually they'll uh, spill out uh, corrosive um, electrolytic um, acid, <laughs> and pretty much it eats through. I don't know exactly what it is per se, but um, the gist of it all is when they leak out, it gets on the board and it eats up um, the contacts and stuff, and it can really wreak havoc on you know all of the um, printed circuits that are down there. Um, and when that happens, it can stop the signals from getting across the board smoothly and <laughs> pretty much by now most of the the older cars um, these do have sort of a lifespan um, I think from what I've heard it's around 10 years or less some some cars have actually had failures sooner um, so I wouldn't say that it's just within a certain you know amount of years per se but uh, you want to get these capacitors replaced. Uh, you can send them in to ECM Tuning, and they offer a service to re replace the caps and do a socket, uh, which if you have an EEPROM, that is, or do an EEPROM conversion. Uh, turbo cars will have this board here, uh, which is for the NOx sensor, by the way. Um, the other thing you want to check is the back of the board. Um, I've already checked the back, but basically you remove the four gold screws um, the other one's here and then there's another one over here and on the other side of the board you want to look for any burn marks or anything that would have burned through the traces um, and if everything looks good uh, then move on basically uh, so up here these are the drivers you want to look at all of these and make sure none of them are uh, cracked melted uh, or damaged uh, these all look good so, especially, let me see if I can get my pin's cap off, so I can use it as a pointer. Especially this one, and this one if you're having ISC problems, because these two um, control the uh, ISC's motor, basically, the stepper motor. Uh, and usually when the ISC goes bad, um, it'll take out both of those. It can take them out. But sometimes you get lucky and they both survive. <laughs> Good enough, you know, for you to keep using. Um, but those are the two areas you really want to focus on. I did do a video uh, describing what all of these drivers go to. Uh, if you guys want me to upload that, let me know. Um, but I just want to make a quick one to just kind of show you guys and illustrate what you want to be looking at. Uh, obviously, as long as you don't see any burn marks uh, or obvious corrosion, anywhere on the board um, you can pretty much just say that it's um, pretty much it'd be safe to say that it's it's worth trying um, like if you're at a wrecking yard or you know you're getting a, a replacement ECU for your vehicle at a parts parts yard whatever 
Um, you do want to crack it open if you can and take a look at all of this stuff just to make sure you're getting a good um, replacement ECU because um, you're just going to waste time if you just buy another one from a junkyard and you never open it up to inspect it. Um, so this is pretty much the stuff that I would be looking for. Just make sure there's no acid um, or anything oozing out of... These capacitors have already been replaced. The factory capacitors actually have like a blue color to them. Um, when I see those, I know they haven't been replaced, and typically if I see them, I'll just replace them as a matter of course, just to stay on the safe side. Um, because, you know, by now, a lot of the capacitors that are on these uh, ECUs, uh, even the TCUs too, like the transmission control modules, um, they'll also typically have, you know, this problem as well. So you want to make sure you address it and uh, get it fixed. Uh, if you guys want to see more or, you know, if you want me to do the video or upload the video of what all these go to, just, um, I guess, mention it in the comments below. Uh, thanks for watching and have a good one.